Welcome to the fighting spirit of old Japan. The inheritor of the now famous Melbruno archives for this very valuable and rare footage of some of Japan's greatest masters. The first art we will describe is Iaido. Iaido is the art of quickly and skillfully drawing the sword. Here, a practitioner of Iaido sits in Seiza, the Japanese formal sitting position. He bows to the weapon, then inserts the weapon into his belt or obi to secure it. He then performs a ceremonial kata, the first kata known as mai, squeezing his knees together, stepping out, drawing and cutting quickly rising and then cutting down on an opponent's head. Then he sheathes the sword called Noto. Then stepping back he draws blocks and cuts once again. Now another view. Cutting, stepping forward and cutting again. Shaking off the blood, Chiburi and then Noto, putting the sword away. Blocking and cutting once again. Now, Iaido, formerly known as Iai Jitsu, was an art of quick draw practiced by the samurai warrior. Modern Iaido is a reflection of this art and has been carried into modern times by styles such as Katori Shinto Ryu, Hasagawa Ryu, Yagyu, and Mukai. Here we see a drip Chibori shaking the blood off inserting the sword, Nota putting it away. The art of Iaido is now supervised by the Zen Nihon Iaido Renmei. It consists mainly of the practice of kata in a meditative state. Here we see yet another form of chiburi or wiping the blood off the blade after a cut is made. Yet another formal sitting position and another kata is performed. Marote, in other words, supporting the blade with the back of the hand, stomping the ground, fumikomi, shaking the blood off and putting away the sword once again. In fact, all Iaido's kata start off with a cutting motion, uh, shaking off of the blood and then securing the blade or nota. You'll observe this in each kata, a stab, a cut another direction, shaking off the blood, and then Noto once again. Now, we come on Police Jo, or the art of Jo Jitsu. Now here we see the famous Mel Bruno, of the judo practitioner from the 1950s, attacking a Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, and he's demonstrating how he would defend against a Western-style boxer and also the use of, of a knife. Here he defeats a knife-wielding assailant. Again, striking his lead hand and countering with the Jiu. A crushing blow to the head stops Mel Bruno dead in his track. Here he strikes his hand, crippling his left hand and preventing him from fur attacking further. Now, a western-style boxer, the same technique, crippling his left hand with a blow from the stick. A thrust to the stomach. Stopping again, just stopping him dead in his tracks against a would-be wrestler. Now, a, a defense from a person wielding a similar weapon, thrusting at him with either a bayonet or a stick. Striking to the wrist, striking to the wrist and countering. Now the art of using the long stick originated in Japan over 400 years ago. It was invented by a samurai swordsman 
known as Musou Gonosuke. He is famous for defeating the legendary Miyamoto Musashi. However, he was originally defeated by Musashi when they both used Boken in a match. But after performing and perfecting his techniques repeatedly, he had a second match with Musashi. Now, the Joe in modern times has been adapted by the police, and it is known as Keibo Soho. The police techniques actually evolved from 12 basic blows developed by Muso Gonosuke into 70 advanced techniques. Here you can see the way in which the stick is grasped and used from alternative sides, striking to various vital points. Here a senior practitioner shows how to use the Joe effectively against a sword. Now another thing to keep in mind is that the Joe was used oftentimes in a situation where non-lethal results were required. Here you can see the intricacies of the movement of the Joe and see its relationship to the katana or the samurai sword. knocking down, actually Uchi Otoshi, knocking down the opponent's sword and encountering. Now a tying up movement, knocking his sword away and countering. Here we have the practitioner slipping the blow of the sword and encountering with the Joe. driving the opponent away, pinning his sword to the ground, encountering with a strike to the body, actually. This is a shutting down motion, getting inside the opponent's reins so he can no longer use his weapon. Ah, and this one, a strike to the wrist and the ribs simultaneously from underneath. Ah, next, the Joe practitioner assumes a hasunogumai. The spinning motion is a distraction technique. Again, coming from underneath and pinning the opponent's sword to the ground. All ways of using the Joe against a swordsman. Striking to the wrist and thrusting, avoiding the opponent's strike and then another crushing blow to the head. Ah, here we have a innocent looking enough Kamai. The opponent appears defenseless while he has the Joe above his head and then you can see how quickly he can turn it to his advantage. Yes, turns it to his own advantage. Now the police Joe, or Kebo Soho, uses techniques for crowd control. Here we see two officers prepared to defend against an unruly mob, demonstrating some of their techniques to the right, to the left. And now forming a barrier, an impenetrable barrier, so the crowd cannot pass through. Also, notice the defensive kamai, or posture. Here, an overhead kirio rosh, as, as used in swordsmanship, is used to drive a crowd back. The coordinated movements, almost like the coordinated movements of armies, coordinated troop movements, help drive the, the crowd away. And this one is to deprive the opponent of being able to grab the end of the stick. Now, this one is a gyakute mochi. The same idea, using gyakute mochi, in other words, a reverse grip with a lead hand. Ah, uh, here we see a side posture, almost like waki no kamai in swordsmanship, striking over the top. 
again, all designed to deprive the opponent, or in this case, a would-be assailant, from being able to grab the end of the stick. Now here we have the same concept being executed, but yet with another technique, a thrusting technique, driving it into the solar plexus deeply. Now thrusting from above, the same concept, but get to another vital point. Yeah, so you see them advancing, driving the crowd back. Ah, this one, Nuki Ski, a sliding thrust to the forward section and then again to the rear. Now to the side, so that the four corners are all covered. the formality of the 1950s police officers. The next martial art to discuss is Kendo, the way of the sword. Now Kendo originated from Kenjutsu, an earlier ancestral form which dates back to almost 2,000 years. Kenjutsu was practiced actively from the 9th century onward. And in fact, during the Tokugawa period, from about 1600 to 1867, there were over 200 practicing Kenjutsu schools in Japan, and competition and swordsmanship was merciless. However, what's happened is it evolved into the modern art sport of Kendo, wherein we're using uh, protective equipment or armor known as dogu. Here the sensei dons the tenagui or the towel used to protect the head. And also the, he is now putting on the men. Again derive a, a bit of armor derived from the actual samurai helmet. This was derived by the Itoryu Kenjutsu faction. Notice the hemo, which are used to tighten up and hold the men in place. The tenagui is not only used for keeping the sweat out of the eyes, but also to avoid a crushing blow. Here we see a practice called kirikaish. Kirikaish, a repetition of strokes. Stepping forward, practicing those strokes, and then running through and striking men to the head. The idea of kendo is to run through, run through and strike the opponent, strike the opponent to the head. Now the two kendo practitioners or kendoka engage in open sparring known as keiko. There's a doe strike to the body, a strike to the head or men. Here we have another sparring match, striking doe. Actually, this is a form of keiko wherein uh, one practitioner uh, merely functions as a target. He's, he's not countering. You'll notice he doesn't counter himself. He's allowing the, actually, in most cases, the student to do the attacking, striking men again. And now you see a counter. Now, here we have an actual match. You can imagine in the days of old when this was performed with real swords, the bloody melee that would have ensued. However, with the shinai, or the development of the bamboo practice sword, which evolved around the 18th century, uh, introduced a measure of safety to the game. You hear, you see them vying for an opening. Actually, the, the competitor on the right was awarded a pound, a full point for that strike. Wow, there's another 
fantastic blow. Well, no point was awarded. Ah, yet another, a perfect men strike to the head. Which, by the way, is the principal technique in Kendo. The object is to catch your opponent completely unaware, strike him in the men, the men to the head thusly. Now they assume the Sankyo position, putting their swords away, they retire, and then bow to finish the match. Now, the idea of Kenjutsu, the earlier ancestral form of Kendo, was a way of using real swords on the battlefield. Swords would be drawn, and then warring armies would face one another, and again, the bloody melee in Japan's history would begin. However, Modern Kendo has adapted the idea of using the live blade from Kinjitsu into its kata, or formal exercises. Now, there are ten of these formal exercises, or kata, in modern Kendo. They are, in fact, all derived from actual Kinjitsu techniques, or kata. Now we have practitioners facing one another, finishing up a Kenjutsu Kata. In fact, the oldest known still existing Kenjutsu style practice in Japan is known as the Katori Shinto rule. Now, this particular school uses many different types of weapon as well as the sword or the katana. There's much ritual involved in the practice of the sword. Many, uh, many ideas of etiquette are all part of the samurai's behavior pattern, if you will. There was once a practice known as Saya Ate. If you were to bang another person's Saya, allowing your scabbard to crash into his, it was in effect a challenge. It was a breach of etiquette, which often ended in the death of one of the samurai. The modern kata of uh, Kendo also use three kata with what is known as the Kodachi. The Kodachi is a short sword, uh, similarly, similar to the Wakazashi, although it is known as the Kodachi in the Kendo kata. And this brings into play the tactics and the methods of using this short sword in close combat. Oftentimes, inside a, a castle or another samurai's house, the swords were checked at the door so that the long sword, the odachi, as it's also referred to, was not available to a samurai to defend himself. So all he was allowed to carry was the wakazashi, or the short sword. And of course, the idea was to get inside the opponent's weapon, if the opponent had a long sword, to get inside his weapon, trap his long sword, thus depriving him of the advantage of the range of the long sword, and allowing one with a short sword to be on top, so to speak. Now, the whole idea of the sword, of course, embraces the entire fighting spirit of old Japan. In fact, the, the sword is a symbol, a symbol of uh, the power of the emperor, the courage of the samurai, and also the chief weapon used to fight among warring samurai factions for the control of the rice field. Now, the chief idea, or may way the, the samurai sword or katana is used is in a slicing motion. In fact, the curvature of the blade is what actually uses the um, uh, mechanics of the blade, if you will, to produce a slicing effect. This, in fact, will cut off or hack off limbs in a mere fraction of a second. A rather formidable weapon in anyone's hands. 
a three-foot razor blade. And there were many tactics evolved in the evasion, evasion of another person's blow, with no actual blocking action, but just cutting down, cutting down, literally slicing a man in half. Again, avoidance of an opponent's blow by just merely taisabake or stepping out of the way with no actual block was a high level of swordsmanship. Why, if one doesn't have time to take time to block, his technique or his counter is twice as fast. A very stylized movement in the use of the blade. Here we see a defense against ski, the thrust, and then pressing back to dominate the opponent, pushing his will down, both physically and mentally. Again, the formality, the ritual of the Japanese martial arts is reflected in these kendo kata. Here we have waki no kamai. Two swords crashing down from the itoryu Kenjutsu system. Suriyage blocking resulting in slicing off the opponent's head. In modern kendo, there's emphasis on striking to the head rather than cutting the neck as in kenjutsu. A minor difference. Again, avoiding the opponent's strike and cutting to the head. Itoku no Itokumai is the Japanese representation for the amount of appropriate distance between two swords or two swordsmen. When that distance is achieved, that is when one must attack or leave. Now, the next martial art or weapon art we have to show you is the short stick, also known as Tanbo. Now, the short stick sort of evolved in the 17th and 18th century environment and was associated with the art of jiu-jitsu. Now, jiu-jitsu originally was on the battlefield, but then later became sort of a police-style method of controlling unruly samurai in the nightclub district. Here we have a defense against a thrust, a strike to the wrist, followed by kote gaishi, a wrist twist, flipping the opponent to his stomach where he can no longer counterattack. This brings us to the end of this vintage archival footage. I hope you've enjoyed it. This is Damien Chambers saying so long for now and until next time.